So if you have the PDF right now, and if you don't, our, our customer uh, service will help you um, in getting that, but you should see it in the chat. So make sure that you watch the chat for that. Okay, so if you've got the PDF and you've got it open, I'm looking over here because my notes are over there. Number one, this is really important, okay? Comfort is king. Now, we're gonna talk about expanding your comfort level as well, but let's just talk about who you are today. Who you are right now as a guitar player. And you wanted to write some music or you wanted to learn some riffs or some songs from your favorite artists and things like that. It's important to know who you are and what your comfort level is. Okay. If you want to learn how to play something, this took me a long time to learn because I am a fan of so many different styles of music that when it comes to writing, it's hard for me to really direct myself to a place that, you know, I'll go, well, today I'm going to play some blues or what, well, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but you really want to understand what it is that you feel is your wheelhouse in terms of style and the technique abilities that you have. So let's say we were talking about open chords, which most people know, right? So I'm gonna get a guitar tone here. Right, so we've got these open chords. Now open chords lend themselves very well to kind of radio rock, folk music, things like that, right? So if I've got... But let's say those are the chords that I know, but I wanna, I wanna rock it out a little bit, right? I wanna play some more ACDC and things like that. Well, if we add a little distortion, which makes a big difference, and we start playing those open chords, but maybe we, we expand those to what I refer to as open power chords, which are open chords, but maybe we're, we're deleting some of the notes. So let's say instead of, and again, everybody's different here. So if you do something different than I do, you, you uh, play it with a different fingering or something like that, don't, don't worry about any of that stuff, okay? It's okay. I'm just showing you my approach, all right? So let's say instead of playing a full A chord, I play an A power chord instead, which enables me then to kind of rock this tight kind of strong, okay? And let's say I go to a G. Instead of going to the full G, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my first finger off, and I'm gonna kill that fifth string with my middle finger. And then I'm gonna to go to a D chord, and I'm gonna take my middle finger off, and I'm gonna deaden out that first string. And with those three chords, you could play half the ACDC songs out there, right? So, knowing your, your, your comfort zone, right? What chords are you familiar with? What chords do you like to play? What chords do you, do you wish you could write with? That sort of thing. We're going to get into all of those different kinds of chords in just a second here. But comfort is king. If you want to write something or you want to play something and you don't want to play it six months from now, you want to play it tomorrow, right? Or you want to play it at the end of the week. Picking something that fits within your wheelhouse is going to make a really big difference, okay? So just kind of remember that as we go through all of these six steps. Okay, uh, uh, B says craft relative to your knowledge level. We just talked about comfort level. Craft relative to your knowledge level. So if you play at this point, again, six months from now, you could be a completely different player. But at this point, if you play a lot of, you know, blues, rock and roll, that's what you understand. That's your knowledge level, right? So if you wanted to, to you know, engage in a different genre or a different style, I think that would be awesome. But you have to be prepared for the different elements that might be in there, right? So if we're talking about a blues rock thing, I might be doing something where I'm going... And so I'm using a pentatonic scale and I'm playing it in E and, you know, this sort of thing. And again, don't worry about the riff I'm playing. I just want you to get the idea. You know, I don't want you to walk away trying to, I'm just playing off the top of my head here. So understanding the, the genre that you fit in, okay, relative to your knowledge level. If you're big on power chords and that's kind of where you live, that's a great place to start and you can always expand. If you're in open chords and that's, that's kind of where you find yourself. Or let's say you really like the sound of bar chords, right? Right? And I throw a little delay or reverb on there, maybe a little delay on there.
right? Start kind of coming up with some ideas like that, right? There's lots of different cool things that I can do. My point again is, is a lot of times for me, when I was learning how to do these sorts of things, I was always pushing far too, I was pushing too high, right? So, which is good. I mean, you want to set your sights high. You want to, you want to dream about all kinds of different things. But instead of saying in three years, I want to learn how to do this, or in three years, I want to learn how to write. I say to you, let's learn how to write now. And then let's just get better at it. So in three years, you're amazing at it. Okay. So instead of waiting and procrastinating all these sorts of things, understand who you are understand your comfort level, the techniques and the tools that you've got on the fretboard, the style of music that you like to listen to, all of these sorts of things are going to influence your ability to get creative and come up with rhythms and, and riff ideas. Okay. So this one C is really important. Okay. Craft or write. Okay. When you're inspired, this is really important. It's hard to write when you're not inspired. If you've just had a really bad day and you don't feel like playing guitar, but you are forcing yourself to play and try and write some sort of riff or come up with something, sometimes it's really hard to come up with something creative because you're just not feeling inspired. You're not feeling creative. So if you're feeling creative and you're feeling inspired, that's a great time to start writing something. If you come up with something on the guitar and you really like it, write it down on a piece of paper or nowadays it's it's awesome because we've all got, you know, phones and all this stuff and you can just record yourself playing it for a later time. Maybe you don't construct an entire song, you just construct a riff and then record it and put it somewhere, you know, in a folder or something where you can keep track of everything that you're doing. So you don't, again, need to make it this insurmountable hill where you go, okay, I got this idea, but now I need to construct an entire song out of it. Maybe you will, but maybe right now you won't. Maybe you'll just come up with that little idea and then you'll revisit that later today or tomorrow or something like that and then keep building. But the, the point is learn to capitalize on the inspiration. When the inspiration is there, do something creative with it. Okay. This is the next part. When the inspiration is not there, that is a great time to try and work on, uh, practicing, right? That's a great time to work on your scales and work on, you know, your theory and work on your technique and all these different kinds of things. Um, because those don't require as much of a creative process as the other one does, right? So if you're not really feeling creative, you're not really feeling inspired, that's a great time to just get in there and start working on your chops and your knowledge and all these different kinds of things. And maybe that will even inspire you. Okay. Inspiration can come from going to shows, talking to people, reading a magazine, watching a video, right? Listening to music. All of these things can get you inspired. And let's say you're traveling and you get inspired and you don't have your guitar. You might just mark down like a, you might write down or record a, a song, like the song title that you were, you were inspired by, or 35 seconds into this song, that's the riff that you were inspired by. So you can come back to it later, right? Different things like that. There's all kinds of things that you can do if you start thinking about it. But th the point is, is that I find a lot of people tend to put up these walls right away that keep them from getting to the next level for whatever reason. We're humans. We do these crazy things and we just never think we're good enough. Like we always think somebody else is the one that should be doing it, not me. Okay. We have to learn about ourselves. We have to understand our comfort zone. Comfort is king. Okay. And we have to understand that we want to be inspired to play, to write all of these different kinds of things. And it doesn't need to be this insurmountable task that we just can't do. That's what rock rhythm. That's what the guitar course is all about is teaching you these tools so you can do this yourself, right? Nowadays, we all have a home studio, a home recording studio, even if it's just our phone or our tablet, right? And some of us have a little bit more, right? Which goes into home recording and that sort of thing. Um, but we all have the option. So let's, let's think about that. That preps us for the next big thing where we can get started here. Uh, number two, next level development. Okay. Because some of you will say, well, I really want to learn how to do this and I'm not capable right now. I get that. Okay. What I'm just encouraging you to do is, is work on these tools while we are getting to those goals that you have. But number, uh, number two is going to help you with that repetition to build stamina and speed. We all know this. Okay. If you want to learn how to play faster, you know, whatever it might be, whether it's a lick or a 
got something on the guitar that you want to learn how to do, whatever it might be, you do it through repetition. Okay. This isn't a techniques webinar and I'm not going to get all deep into that, but you understand that you have to break down something to build it back up. You have to sit and do something over and over and over to, to, be, to develop that strength and that stamina. So if, if your goal was to learn how to play faster stuff, right? Whether it's down, whatever it might be, or alternate, you've got to develop these techniques. So again, this goes back to what I was saying. In the meantime, try and write some other stuff, but keep working on these things. When you're not in a creative space, this is a great time to start working on that repetition to build that strength and that stamina. Okay. Uh, B, break down techniques for deeper understanding and development. Sometimes when you break down an idea, let's just take something small here. Let's say I was doing something like this. Okay. I'm going to do a little string skipping thing. And again, I don't want to waste a bunch of time on this, but... This is a little exercise that turned into a song, but what I'm doing is I'm just skipping over a string and I'm going seven, nine, and then seven, and then I'm back. And then I'm heading out here to the 10. You can see how I'm turning it into a little exercise. And I'm doing a pull off. And then I'm going back to the nine, back to the seven. And again, I, I don't want to spend a bunch of time on this because we don't have a lot of time and it's not about this one guitar lick. Let's just say I made a lick out of that. See? You could, you could take something like that and learn it and then practice it, develop it, but then maybe it morphs into something else. You start exploring it in a different way and it becomes something else that you can use in your own playing. So you're developing your understanding of your fretboard, you're developing your technique, and then on a creative level, when you're feeling inspired, you're going to convert that into something that sounds uh, a little more like you in your comfort zone and you're going to start writing a riff around it. Like that would sound really good over E. Over, and then I could try it over A. Works over that. So all of a sudden I've got this cool little idea that could work over E and A if I chose to if that's the kind of chord progression that I'm looking for, you see? So there's lots of really great ways. Inspiration doesn't have to be this monumental eight hour thing. Sometimes you just hear a riff or you just hear somebody play something and you go, hey, that's kind of cool. I don't need to play it exactly like so-and-so. I just need the idea to get me, to kickstart me to another level, okay? That's the point of the deeper, you know, looking deeper into a riff or an idea that you're, 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 seeking or you've just found some something that's just come into your your funnel of guitar playing that you you think is cool okay and then the last one which we kind of talked about see there is study songs and genres you like for inspiration and understanding if you want to write like blues rock players if you want to write like metal players if you want to write like 70s rock players if you whatever deep purple whatever it might be one of the greatest things you can possibly do is learn some things from them. Learn some songs, learn some riffs, learn some solos. Look at Richie Blackmore and see what he's doing, right? Look at Eric Clapton and see what he's doing. Look at Ingve Malmsteen and see what he's doing. I mean, there's a million of these players where a lot of times we stop at learning a song or an idea from a song, right? We'll learn something and then we just move on and we learn something else. Now, I, I'm, I'm not against learning songs. I think it's one of the greatest things that you can do. Learn songs from artists that you... Um, want to emulate, styles that you want to emulate. For me, and you've probably heard me talk about this before, but it's like painting. If you wanted to learn how to paint, one way that you learn how to paint is by studying other painters so you can understand. I mean, at some point you learned what the color blue and this and a triangle and a square and all these things did, even though you weren't thinking of it like that, those were your tools. And then you took it into a more creative space and you started learning how to mix and match these things and you, be, you came up with your own thing, right? But music is no different. We just use the information out there, whether it's scales and theory and all these things, which we can call logical. And then music, songs, bands, styles of music is kind of the real world element. 
right? That's like our, our spray paint, right? That sort of thing. So we can combine all of these different things to come up with ideas, but the only way we can do that is we have to first learn something by somebody else. And here's the big thing. And then we got to break it down. Like instead of just learning it and going, oh, oh, that's whatever. And there it is. And now I can impress my friends. That's great. If that's, if that's what you want, I think that's awesome. But there's another level happening there, which is that artist or group of people took time to, to break something down and then add pieces together, which became a song. The more we can learn how to break that down, which we are going to do in the, the rock rhythm course as well, the more you understand about the style of music that you're trying to write in the first place or the song structure or all these different things. It's really amazing and it's a lot of fun. It may not seem as productive because you're not just practicing finger exercises for three hours and I'm not saying that that's bad. I'm not saying don't do that. You want to do all that too. I'm just saying the more you start looking at the music around you and the music that you like, the more you start understanding what's actually happening in here. Okay. Thank you, everybody. I see we've got some new people here. Thank you so much for coming. Um, hopefully you've heard the first part. Make sure that you've got the PDF and you're, you're taking notes because this stuff is just really crucial. Okay. Writing music, creating riffs, all these different kind of things. They don't just require me showing you how to play some sort of lick or scale. It's, it's you putting yourself in the right mindset first, which is what we're doing right now. Okay. So those are the first two. Okay. And again, keep an eye for that button whenever that pops up, if it's, if it's not there already, um, to check out more about the course and see if that's something that could help you. Let's move on to number three. And now if you got your guitar, we can play a little bit. Okay. Now the tools are vast and we're only going to go through a few of these things where in the course we break this down further. But again, I don't want to take too much of your time, but the tools are the elements that we use to construct a song. Well, the first thing we need are some element of chords. Open chords. Whatever they might be, right? Open chords. Bar chords, like I just played there. Power chords. Some sort of power chord element, okay? Um, Bar chords, chord fragments. Chord fragments are little pieces of chords. And you see this a lot like in this style of music where I might be playing bar chords. But instead of playing the full chord, I play. And that's where I get. Right? Right? So we're going to keep talking about that, but you can see that there's chord elements in various different songs that we'd play, right? If I go, I'm either using some element of open chords, some element of power chords, some element of bar chords, or even a chord fragment, a piece of some chord, however you look at it, whether it's an open chord or a bar chord or whatever it might be to create things Here, like this. Right? So to do those sorts of things, when I was a kid and I was learning how to play these things, I never knew what they were actually doing. I just learned the, t you know, well, there wasn't tab at that time, but later the tab came out and made things easier. Um, but that's not the point. I didn't know what any of this stuff was. So I could play things, but I couldn't really use it in a creative space because I didn't know they were just, you know, kind of ethereal things out here that I could, I could play, but I couldn't utilize because I didn't understand anything like chord fragments, which is what that is, which Eddie Van Halen uses a lot. You know, it's coming from a chord that he knows. He's just deciding not to use the entire chord for a whole host of different reasons. So he's got open strings, palm muting, which we're going to get into all that as well. So one of the most essential tools to some sort of riff, whether you're writing it or you're playing it from somebody else, is that it's going to have a chordal element, open chord, open power chord bar chord, power chord, chord fragments, something like that. And again, we go way into that in the, the, uh, the rock rhythm course, but just be aware that those things are really important. Okay. You're going to need something like that. The next part of number three, B says single note style. Okay. Not just chord style, but single notes. Okay. 
So we really have three things to, to build from if we're going to make something single notey. It might be a scale, like a pentatonic scale, right? If I do something like this. Right, which is a kind of a Metallica thing, um, which is a pentatonic scale. It's actually a blues scale because it's got a blues note in there too, which you'd go, wow, Metallica and blues? Sure. They all kind of mesh in different ways, right? If I play something like this. Okay, I'm playing a scale. It's an E minor scale that I'm playing. Okay, so I'm using a scale. Might be pentatonic, it might be diatonic, right? You might be doing something where you've got, um, well, again. You know, something like that where you've got a melody that you want to play. Right, something like that. Well, then maybe that's coming from what we call the diatonic scale. Again, the point is, is that when you're playing single notes, it's either coming from somewhere that makes sense or the last one on there, which is explorative, which doesn't make sense. You're just making something up because it looks cool, which again, some great songs have been written that way. But if you think about it, if I go... <laughs> which always reminds you like a Slayer kind of thing. And basically what I'm doing is I'm just creating a little box, seven and eight, two and three, you know, eight and nine, something like that. And that's what I'm doing. I'm just playing these different kind of little pieces and it sounds kind of cool. And what, what a lot of people like about it is it doesn't just sound like a scale or something like that. It's more creative. It gets you thinking outside the box going, oh, I never even knew you could do that because I always learned you were supposed to... Right, you were supposed to do something like that. And now all of a sudden here you are playing something that makes no sense, but it's inspiring. It sounds creative. It's different. Like your head goes, oh, that's really cool. I've never thought of that. You wouldn't come across that if you didn't have the opportunity, opportunity to learn a riff or something from someone you like. Okay, so let's move on to number four here. Okay, number four, determine the groove approach. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's keep this very, very, very simple, okay? One of the coolest things that I came across and I try and teach a lot is this idea of down strumming or down picking versus alternate strumming or alternate picking, right? Down versus down up. Now, in the logical world, if you've got downs here, you've got down ups in between. You can add an up and you're gonna go twice as fast, right? That all makes sense to people, which is great, but there's something else happening there, which is the sound of the music that you're playing. When you play with more of a down strum approach to, to either chords, which if you look, we talk both about chord style and single note style in, in number four there, okay? When you strum or pick down, you get more of this raw, aggressive, kind of, I always call it Cro-Magnon because it just reminds me of like a, a Cro-Magnon man clubbing somebody over the head. You get this raw, edgy, non-perfect kind of sound. <laughs> by starting and stopping, right? You're just kind of bashing the guitar. <laughs> to get those kind of sounds, right? And when we play down picking, you know, if you were playing something that's fast downs, you know that it's kind of hard to do over a long period of time. So it becomes kind of edgy because it's not perfect. Where if you were going, it's a whole lot easier, it's a whole lot smoother, right? But when you're going, right? You get that kind of, you get that edgy sound from those downs. So even though you could make it more comfortable by turning it over and doing alternate picking, you keep it down to give it that raw, aggressive ACDC, Led Zeppelin kind of thing. That to me is how I think of down picking when I'm playing songs. 
it's for some people it's easier and for some people it's harder for some people it's easier because they have the freedom of just kind of hitting and punching these strings at different times for some people it's harder because they need the consistency of that that alternate picking or that smoothness of understanding a down up like an eighth note where when you're going you're starting and stopping at different places if that makes sense because then the other logical thing is is that you start playing everything as alternate picking and of course when you do this over let's say chords strumming See how it just smooths out? Where if I was going, let me turn up a little bit there. It's it's a bit edgier than going. Now, what alternate picking or alternate strumming does is it smooths things out, but it also gives us the opportunity to increase our speed, right? Because alternate picking allows us to take something into a place where we couldn't do with just down picking. We can't go as fast with downs as we can with alternate picking. So alternate picking really serves two things, in my opinion. One is, is it smooths things out. It makes it a little bit more smooth and, and it loses those raw, rough edges that the, the down strumming does. Um, and it keeps everything nice and consistent like a maraca, right? You just keep strumming or picking, however you're doing it. But the other thing is, is that it enables you to go a lot faster. That's the other big thing that we use it for, especially in rock music. So when we want to play something that's fast, we can do that, you see? So when I first started learning, like I always use Master of Puppets as an example, because when I first started learning how to play Master of Puppets by Metallica a long time ago, I got to this part. If you know what that is, and I couldn't play it down, so I played it alternate picking. Which is hard enough on its own, but that's how I learned how to play it was with alternate picking. And I remember somebody telling me, well, you're not supposed to do that because Metallica picks everything down. Like... I was a punk because I didn't play it with down picking. So I took offense to it, of course, and started playing, <laughs> learning how to play everything faster down, which I am glad that I did. So again, you know, that's, that's one of those things is sometimes you have to make the choice in your comfort is king element. If you really want to learn how to play something and you don't want to wait six months to play it, maybe you'd alternate pick it. Maybe you'd down pick it. I, it's not for me to say. Okay? I'm just telling you that these are things that you need to be thinking about to make your journey either more comfortable or next level. That's what you got to think about. Okay, So again, if this is helping, please let me know. Let me know if, if, if this is giving you some creative ideas, because I would love for you to head over to like the Guitar Zoom community and post an idea that you've come up with. Maybe something outside the realm of what you normally do for a, you know, a video or something, if you're part of our group. Um, and see if, it, if some of these ideas can get you in a different place. Looking at some music, getting some ideas, drawing some ideas, deciding how you're picking something or how you're strumming something to make it more comfortable, not only for you to play, but your listener to hear. That's another really big part of this, okay? So let's keep going here. Number five, get creative with your choices. Chord style, let's talk about creativity. So we've got some chords, we've got this, you know, this scale that we're gonna use, whatever. Chord style couple things you can think about scratching palm muting pushing chord fragments those are the ones I've got written down there are many others that we'll talk about in the course but scratching right so when you got learning how to scratch in between things adds a really cool kind of raw element <laughs> For different things, right? We see that in, we see it right there, okay? So the next thing that we've got there is uh, pushing. Pushing is when you take something, instead of playing it on one, one, two, three, four, bum, it comes in early. One, two, three, four, three, four, two, three, four, like that. It's another great thing to do. Palm muting. Learning how to palm mute with those chords is just really huge, especially if you're playing power chords or something like that. 
And then the last one I've got there is chord fragments. Take an idea of, let's say you, you like to play a lot of bar chords or something like that. Start exploring some sort of chord fragment idea that you can work with as well. That's pretty cool. There's single notes, which is still part of five. Same thing, adding palm muting, okay? Open string options. Open string options, I just mean so you can wave at your mom and your grandma. And again, I'm combining single notes with chords, right? So I can take those open strings. Let's say I did something like this. Now you see I'm using open chords, single notes, a little bit of palm muting, a little bit of scratching, pushing, and it just makes some really great stuff, okay? And then the last one we've got, because I don't want to take a lot of your time here, the last one is crafting into a riff. Learning to combine these things like I just showed you, combining chords and single notes together. Creating repetition, doing it over and over, right? You know, that sort of thing. It creates the riff, because the riff is something that is repetitive. We hear it over and over and over, and we know what it is. As soon as we hear it, we know what it is because of that repetition. You see? You can do this. I know you can, okay? Create tension and release, okay? Tension release for me is like fast, slow, high, low sad, happy, okay? Lot, little, okay? We can do this with different guitar parts, playing a lot, right? Right, changing dynamics like that, something's fast and then it's slower. You can do that with drums, right? If you have a drum machine or, you know, some sort of drum recording stuff, things like that, you can do that within the context of your song structure. So there's lots of really great things that you can do like that. Okay, the point of all of this is, is you need to be inspired. You need to find a way of staying creative by listening to music, by, you know, having something new come into your guitar funnel and not just getting frustrated because you can't do something, but focus on the things that you can do, study some other things that fit within that and start making some music with it. Okay, thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for taking some